If you're trying to get ahead in the fields of environmental science, then it really seems like it's pretty much impossible to actually get paid to get into entry level positions within this field. But there are some really incredible paid internships that exist out there that many people don't really know about or don't know how to prepare for. So today's video, I'm gonna be going over what those paid internships are and a little bit about my experience with them. So what's up if you're new here? My name is Eli and I'm a marine biologist and I love to make videos about career development within the fields of environmental science, biology, marine biology. So if you are into that, I definitely encourage you to subscribe. But I also wanted to mention before I get started on this video that these internships are really geared towards the United States, which is unfortunate. However, some of the ones that I do mention are fitted for international students. You just have to look a little bit more into the eligibility requirements for each of them. So the very first paid internship I really wanna talk about and one that I have a little bit of personal experience with is the NOAA Hauling Scholarship. So NOAA stands for the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association. And this is a branch of the government um, or a government program that's dedicated to understanding and monitoring the ocean, its waterways, and also the atmosphere. And this isn't just limited to the United States. There's actually NOAA centers all around the world. So this internship has some pretty incredible opportunities surrounding it. The award itself, if you go to the website, um, you can see a lot more specific details, but the award itself is pretty unbelievable. It actually covers up to a maximum of $9,500 for two academic years of full-time study. So this is meant for um, people in their second year of a four-year program or the third year of a five-year program. So you're supposed to have two years left and you can pretty much get all of your tuition covered if it's under um, $9,500, which is absolutely crazy. The program is a 10 week full time internship that you get paid $700 per week while you are there. So the greatest part about the Noah Hollins scholarship and why it is just super cool is how flexible it is and how much you're getting paid. So once it, it, you kind of apply to one major kind of the whole thing, the whole Noah Hollins um, scholarship and after you get accepted you then have to find a facility that you want to work with and find a specific supervisor that you want to work with so you have to do a lot of reaching out to specific supervisors but the great thing about that is is you will already have been a recipient at that point and you'll be a fully funded student so a lot of people are willing to work with those people. So you really get a lot of flexibility to do exactly what you want. So I have made a lot of friends that actually received the Noah Hauling Scholarship. This is an extremely competitive scholarship, by the way. For reference, at our university of 30,000, only two people received it. And there's actually, I think, only about 120 students that received this nationwide. It is a very, very competitive program. And that's because of its massive benefits. So I have friends that participated in this program all over the world. I, a, a lot of my friends, and sorry about my dogs in the background, I can hear them and I don't know if you can, but we'll continue on. <laughs> so I had a lot of friends that actually got this scholarship and went off to Hawaii. So these friends worked in very different parts of NOAA. The very cool thing about this program is you can do all kinds of things. So anyway, you can do all kinds of things with this program. For example, so you can work with all kinds of things with NOAA. There's a lot of diversity and opportunity to really specialize in exactly what you want with this program. You could be working with research, policy, engineering, management, education. There's so much flexibility as long as it's related to a specific NOAA facility or project that's occurring. 
So speaking about some of my friends that I know personally that participated in this program, um, I had a few friends that went to Hawaii and one of them was working on the national monument in Hawaii, the Papahanaumokuakea National Monument. I think that's how it's pronounced. And he was working, I'm not sure exactly what he was doing, but I know he was working with the um, facility and breaking down a lot of the policy. I had another friend that was an engineer and she, her project was to design a camera system to help monitor the monk seals on the island. I also had another friend that actually went to a Washington NOAA facility and her job was to create a um, model based on programming and figure out risks related to seabirds and how they interacted with uh, fishing boats. So once again, this is a really incredible program to look into, especially if you're early on into your undergraduate career. But if you know ahead of time, start working on it as early as you can because this is a very competitive scholarship. The next paid internship I wanted to talk about is the National Science Foundation Research Experience for Undergraduates. Kind of a mouthful, but this is another government program. This is kind of similar to NOAA in that there's a lot of freedom to really specialize in exactly what you're interested in doing. And a lot of this is obviously focused on research, but within that realm, there's definitely just so many different things you could be doing within the world of biology, physics, marine biology, whatever you can possibly imagine related to um, university research. So the process of applying to um, this program is a bit less streamlined than NOAA in that you kind of just submit one application and you're accepted to the entire like NOAA Holling Scholarship, but for a research experience, for undergraduates, the REU, you have to find an individual REU that you are specifically interested in and apply to that individual REU. So there's kind of some benefits and challenges with this. The benefit is that you can apply to something that you might be really qualified for as opposed to something else and really be able to target your application to this specific um, experience. But the challenge is that there's usually over a hundred different REUs and you have to do a lot of research and really decide and narrow down um, which specific ones you're interested in applying to because if you apply to like seven, you're obviously going to be spending a lot more time on lots of personal statements instead of making one single personal statement or application really incredible. So I have three friends that actually got an REU that I knew during my undergrad and they all did very different things. Um, my first person that I met that got an REU her sophomore year, she traveled all the way to Catalina Island off of Southern California and she did something super cool. She was diving for the majority of this um, internship. She was working with a marine biologist uh, grad student and her job was to do a lot of monitoring and surveying for the abalone and she got to do a whole lot of diving and she was only able to do this and be qualified for it because she was a scientific diver but this experience was pretty unique compared to the rest of these experiences my other friend she traveled to maryland and her main project was working on satellite images for Chesapeake Bay. And she was analyzing those satellite images to basically understand what was occurring with the algae in that bay and kind of understanding the impacts of the local community on the bay based on those satellite images. And so my last friend, he was um, actually in chemical engineering and he also did something very different and he went to Portland and he worked with um, microscopy and nanofabrication. And all of that is really foreign to me because I am not familiar with the world of chemical engineering, but um, he's one of my friends and he had the best time in the world. I know that he now wants to live in Portland after this experience. So all of these experiences were all paid for by the National Science Foundation. And so the stipend for this experience is, it's about 10 weeks of work and it ranges from about $4,000 to $6,000 for the entire thing. So a modest stipend to make sure that you are accommodated. They also cover your transportation to whatever site that you're going to. Like the Noah Holland Scholarship does 
does this too and make sure that you have appropriate transportation and um, living accommodations. And so I also wanted to mention here that the, for the eligibility, you have to be a US citizen for this one. And you also um, cannot be a high school graduate who has not yet enrolled to an institution. And you also cannot have already received your bachelor's degree when you're trying to, um, when you're actually participating in the RU. So the third paid internship I wanted to acknowledge is one that isn't entirely related to STEM, but I still wanted to mention it because it's still a fantastic opportunity for anyone of any background. And I have known someone that's participated in this internship and has benefited greatly from this, who is in the realm of marine biology. So I definitely wanted to mention it. And so this um, internship is the Critical Language Scholarship offered through the US Department of State. So the Critical Language Scholarship is a summer study abroad program for American university students specifically. Unfortunately, this is another one geared towards Americans, but um, it's an opportunity for students to engage with a language that the United States has deemed essential for kind of international relations. So if you go to the website, you can see all the languages offered. There's 15 of them that are deemed essential and you can check out the list, but um, there's a pretty great variety of options. So this is a fantastic opportunity for anyone that has any goals of really collaborating with another country and understanding them. So if you're trying to pursue a government position in the future that really involves international relations, then this is a fantastic opportunity. And ways that it translates to um, something like what I'm doing within marine biology, I'm actually going to the Philippines in January for my own research. And an experience like this would have been crucial to um, preparing me for this huge immersive experience I'm gonna have in um, the next year for my own research. It, this program, I guess going into a bit of the actual program, you spend eight to 10 weeks immersed in the language. It's a very intensive language immersion um, program. And so you have at least 20 hours of intensive language instruction per week. And it's designed to be pretty much an entire semester. I believe it's a semester of um, language credit in a period of eight to 10 weeks. So you're getting a ton of um, opportunity to really understand the language. They also make sure you are partnered with people to uh, practice conversation skills. They also take you to cultural immersion events and um, activities and excursions to help you mess with the community. Bottom line is you are getting to immerse with another culture, which I think is just absolutely invaluable experience for absolutely anyone in any field. And you can get paid to do this. So the benefits um, involved with this scholarship are complete, basically complete coverage. You're not really paying for anything um, that I'm aware of. Um, actually, there are some very small things that you you pay for. I think like the passport and um, another small thing, but things that are covered are the international and domestic travel, um, your visa orientation and the entire programming. I wanted to acknowledge that this can apply to a lot of things later on. I kind of touched on this, but um, it really helps you understand the broader impacts of your individual goals, especially those in research. Um, understanding how your individual, and just speaking from my own experience, understanding how my research projects can upscale to other, you know, or other communities within the world, or how my study system can um, relate to another study system or ecosystem in the world. Um, it also really helps you develop your um, communication skills. So this is absolutely an essential skill, and regardless of the field that you're going into, communication is obviously essential articulating your ideas articulating your goals interests and um or just articulating things professionally um, you will develop incredible communication skills through this program 
and having to communicate with a lot of people in a very challenging way in a language that you might not be familiar with. Another thing I wanted to acknowledge is you don't have to have much language experience prior to these, um, this scholarship. Some of them you really can be a complete novice, like no experience necessary to engage with this language. Some of them you do need at least intermediate experience and some you need advanced experience. So just make sure um, before you get excited about a certain language that you look at the requirements to know that you actually qualify for them. So these next few paid internships, I'm only going to talk about briefly because I don't have as much personal experience with them, but I definitely wanted to acknowledge them because they are still extremely valuable if you are looking for STEM paid internships and if these are relevant to you. So another paid internship within STEM that is a really incredible program, but one that I'm not entirely familiar with is the NASA internship. I actually do have a friend that participated in this internship. It is also paid. And he was actually, he's a marine biologist, which is really interesting working with the, um, working with NASA but he actually was working with a, um, a project where he flew over the ocean and he analyzed specific light frequencies to see if he could associate that with microplastics. So a really interesting way to kind of cross over fields. And um, NASA, as far as I understand with this internship, it's a lot like NOAA, where it's a singular application. And once you are accepted to the program, you then pick a specific facility and a specific mentor that you want to work with. Um, so there is a bit of flexibility there. So definitely something you should definitely check out. I'll link in the description below um, where you can go explore the types of projects that are currently occurring that you might want to um, look into to participate in. So the next paid internship I definitely wanted to acknowledge is the Ecological Society of America SPUR Fellowship. And SPUR stands for Seeds Partnerships for Undergraduate Research Fellowship. So I definitely wanted to acknowledge this because I'm actually a part of the Ecological Society of America. They're an absolutely incredible organization. I, I have so many good things to say because I was involved for the past, um, I think it's been nine months with their student program. It's called SEEDS, which is Strategies for Eco Ecology, Education, Diversity. I always forget the acronym, but super cool program. They have a lot of opportunity for mentorship and um, just so many opportunities for students. And this paid internship in particular is specifically for SEEDS students. So if you're interested in getting involved in the SEEDS program, this is um, a really great opportunity because because it's such a smaller community of people potentially applying that means it's much less competitive so you should definitely consider looking into this one if you are specifically interested in ecology research esa is really incredible at focusing on giving opportunities for people of diverse backgrounds and typically underrepresented people within the field of ecology so they are really big on that and really try to give opportunities to people that typically wouldn't have those opportunities so their paid fellowships are kind of like an reu to where you are designing a specific research project with a mentor but Again, it's a little bit less competitive than an RU because it's a much smaller pool of applicants because you don't have people from all over the country, you just have people from Seeds. So thank you guys so much for watching and let me know in the comments below if you've ever actually participated in any of these programs or if you're intending on applying to any of them. I'd love to see the actual responses of people actually following up on these things. They're big things to undertake and it really takes a lot of motivation and drive and great people and support to actually stick with them and continue applying. So you got this and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or feel free to DM me on social media. Those are linked in the description below. But anyway, as always, have a wonderful rest of your day.